Here we've got three different molecules that we're going to draw. The first one is NF3. And I'm going to tell you as we're drawing this that nitrogen is in the center of the molecule and the fluorines are arranged around the nitrogen atom. So maybe something that kind of looks like this. Now, um, our goal here, again, is to draw the Lewis structure for this molecule. So we want to draw a representation of the way this molecule looks. And we're going to start by drawing the Lewis dot symbols for each one of the atoms in this molecule. So nitrogen has five valence electrons, fluorine has seven valence electrons, and I'm strategically drawing these Lewis dot symbols in a way that, you know, I've kind of got the electrons lined up just right for um, the purposes of making a Lewis structure. So these are all nonmetals, which means that they are going to participate in covalent bonding or the sharing of electrons. They're going to be sharing electrons like this. And if we want to turn that notation into a Lewis structure, we want to have our nitrogen in the middle. We want to have a bond to each one of our fluorine atoms. That single line represents the sharing of those electrons in between each fluorine and the central nitrogen. And then we also need to put the lone pairs of electrons, one lone pair on the nitrogen and three lone pairs on each one of the fluorine atoms. And so this would be the, the, the Lewis structure for the NF3 molecule. Let's try our next example. Here we have CO2. In CO2, the arrangement that we see is carbon in the middle with the oxygen atoms on either side of the carbon. Now you might be wondering uh, how you would possibly know from the formula, how you would know the order of the atoms in the molecule. And that is something that I'm gonna teach you in a later video. But for now, we're just focusing on this concept of sharing electrons and bonding. So let's draw our Lewis dot symbols for each one of these atoms. Now the oxygens, gonna kinda get those drawn strategically. I'm thinking of exactly how I want my little dots to line up here to make it work perfectly. So this is kind of a different situation um, with this. We can we know that we want to have some electron sharing going on. So we can see that, you know, we want to have electrons being shared like that between those guys. Let's go ahead and just, you know, start by drawing that bond. So we've made one bond between that carbon and oxygen. And over here on this side, um, we can we can do the same thing. I'm actually going to I'm going to share these uh, these electrons right here. So oxygen on the left and carbon, they're going to share some electrons right there. Let's share those electrons. So now we've made bond right there with that oxygen. But notice that if we, you know, if we just left it like that, so let's, let's just kind of pause for a minute and see where we're at. If we left it like that, we've got these electrons here accounted for. We still have two single electrons on the carbon. So we'll put them like that. And then this oxygen over here, we've got one, two, three, four, five electrons around it. So we've got the two pairs and then that single electron. And this oxygen over here, we've got same thing, two pairs and a single. So we'll draw those two pairs in a single. And let's see how we're doing in terms of how many electrons are around each atom. So this oxygen right here, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons. I would really would rather have eight. Carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. And the oxygen on this side has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Remember, each line represents two. So, you know, we're working on this structure, but we're not quite there. We need to do more sharing. We've got these single electrons. We need to do some more sharing. So we could share again. Let's share another set of electrons between the carbon and the oxygen on the left. I'm going to erase those dots. And we'll draw, when we have another set of electrons that are being shared, we just simply draw another line. So here we have two lines to represent two pairs of electrons being shared. And now let's see where we're at with this oxygen. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this oxygen is good now. 
This carbon, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not quite there. We need to have some more sharing of electrons going on. So let's share these ones right here. And we'll erase these guys and replace them with a line to represent the sharing. So this carbon right here now has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. It's happy. And this oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons also happy. So all of the electrons in this situation are happy. Let's make a note of what we have going on here. Two lines, so a double line. That means that we have a total of four electrons being shared between those two atoms. And we refer to that as a double bond. Even though we didn't put a name on it, now is a good time to put a name on this type of bond. This we call a single bond. So just a normal sharing of two electrons, which is definitely the most common, we call that a single bond. All right, we have one molecule left, HCN. In HCN, the carbon is in the center, hydrogen is on one side, nitrogen is on the other side. Here are the Lewis dot symbols for these three atoms. And remember, hydrogen likes to only just share a total of two electrons. So go get some sharing between the hydrogen and the carbon like that. And then for our nitrogen out here, we're gonna have sharing right there. We're gonna have sharing right there. Oops, I already shared to that one. Sharing right there. And we'll have some sharing right there as well. So we've got three sets of electrons that are being shared between the carbon and the nitrogen. Plus, don't forget that there is still that lone pair on the nitrogen. How are we doing in terms of the octet rule? Carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. Nitrogen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. Everything looks good. We have here a triple line. That triple line, as you saw, represents six electrons. And as you can probably imagine, we call that a triple bond. Last but not least, we're just gonna talk very briefly about the single versus double versus triple bond in terms of their strength. Because the single bond represents only two electrons being shared, it is the weakest bond. And the triple bond, because it has six electrons being shared, it is the strongest, with the double bond being somewhere in the middle. When we're talking about strength, we're talking about uh, how much energy is associated with these atoms being held together, and how hard would it be for you to rip these atoms apart and break that bond. So the triple bond is the hardest one to break because it's the strongest. Also, another thing that we see is that the triple bond is the shortest of, of all three of these types of bonds. And the single bond is the longest, with, again, the double bond being somewhere in the middle. And this also has to do with the bond strength. So the triple bond being a very strong bond, these atoms are held together very close and very tight to each other because of all that strength. The single bond, because there is only two electrons and it's a relatively weak bond, these atoms are not being held together very close. So they're further apart, and we say that the length between them is, is longer.